Hi, I'm Brad Dacus, President and Founder of the Pacific Justice Institute. For as long as Pacific Justice Institute has been in existence, many pastors have been unsure and afraid of what they can say at the pulpit when it comes to political issues intersecting with the Bible. Frankly, they worry about losing their nonprofit 501c3 status, and they want to be faithful to government authorities as is set out clearly in Romans chapter 13. But they also want to stand strong for biblical principles and implore their members to vote biblically. In 2016, an estimated 25 million Christians chose not to vote. And many state and local races were decided by just a few thousand votes or fewer. It's an opportunity for us to restore our freedoms and our liberties simply by voting biblically. And just imagine the kind of impact we could see with Pacific Justice Institute working closely together with churches like you to make sure that your voice and your church's voice is heard loud and clear. What you're about to learn is the letter of the law. Though there are restrictions on church's political spending, keep in mind that there has been no enforced prohibitions on what a pastor preaches behind the pulpit regarding politics. Hundreds of pastors who've given political endorsements from the pulpit have sent copies of those sermons to the IRS and the IRS has not moved on a single one of them. Why? Because the IRS knows full well that it will likely be determined unconstitutional by this Supreme Court. Pacific Justice Institute's pastor liaison, Peter Mord, is going to fill you in on all the details you need to know. Now, here's Peter. Hello, my name is Peter Mord, pastor liaison for Pacific Justice Institute, and welcome to The Church Finds Its Voice. Pacific Justice Institute is dedicated to the defense of religious freedom, parental rights, and the sanctity of life and other civil liberties across the nation. And a part of our mission is to equip pastors and churches to do their work boldly and without fear. Many of you pastors and churches uh, who wonder what you can legally do as a church uh, to fulfill the, the mission and duty of your members to vote without risking your church's nonprofit status, will ask, how can we do this legally? That's a legitimate question. And there's a way to legally equip your church to make biblical, God-honoring decisions at the ballot box. As a pastor, I know how hard it is to lead our congregation both boldly and wisely. The truth is, we have tremendous freedom as church leaders to encourage our members to vote, others as well. As long as one, there's no endorsement of a specific party or candidate, or two, all members, regardless of their political beliefs, are encouraged to register to vote. There are ways we can ensure nonpartisan voter registration by one, on our voter registration cards, we do not specifically list candidates by name, if we want to list them by name, we have to list all of them. Number two, as a church, you cannot only register voters that support a particular candidate or party, you must register everyone. Number three, do not let representative from political parties or campaigns run the registration process. Your church can target specific geographical areas if you don't ask political affiliations before registration. If you live in California, you need to submit a statement of distribution as well as a plan for distribution to the Secretary of State. There's more information linked in the description of this video. Now let's talk about distributing materials. Your church may distribute nonpartisan voter guides to your congregants. Here are some recommendations. Number one, Voter guides should address issues in which the church does not have a stated position like environment, foreign policy, taxes, immigration, healthcare, etc. Two, voter guides must not favor any particular party or candidate over others. And three, voter guides must not use labels such as conservative, liberal, Democrat, Republican, so on, because they can apply church preference. In addition to voter guides, churches may also legally distribute voting records for all candidates of office under three conditions. One, voting records should contain no editorial opinion. Two, 
content should not imply approval or disapproval of the candidate or their voting record. Three, candidates up for re-election should not be listed as incumbents. Your church may also send questionnaires to all candidates requesting a brief statement of their views or values on a variety of issues. However, remember this, the questionnaires must include all candidates' answers, not just some of them. Two, questions asked to the candidates should not be worded in a biased way. Three, answers from candidates on the questionnaires cannot be edited by the church to create bias for or against a specific candidate. Let's talk about political forums and debates. Your church might be the venue for a political forum or debate. If so, that's a great opportunity, but it must be done in a non-political way or a non-partisan way. For more information about that, please go to our website as we have some specific, in fact, there's five different things you need to know before you host one of these forums. Now, every so often, churches will have a political or elected official come to speak. If this speech is political in nature, please remember these three things. You must invite all the candidates seeking the same office. Number two, you cannot explicitly or implicitly endorse a candidate. And number three, you cannot host any fundraising events for the candidates or incumbent elected officials. So if the presentation is not politically charged or nonpartisan, for instance, they're speaking about their faith or some other topic, then remember these things. You do not have to invite all the candidates. Number two, you cannot host any kind of fundraising or allow the candidate to mention his or her campaign in the speech. Now your church has a lot of issues that are important to you, and we wanna encourage you to talk about those issues. So let's talk about the church and issue advocacy. Your church is allowed to advocate for issues that are important to you, but there are certain restrictions. It's important to remember churches cannot spend more than five to 10% of their annual budget on lobbying activities. Churches can though spend five to 10% of their church budget on circulating petitions. Now let's talk about educating your congregation. Your church may educate their members about pending legislation. If your church urges a specific action like contacting members of a legislative body with the purpose of supporting or opposing legislation, this would fall under insubstantial amount of the church's total resources. In addition, pastors are allowed to appear in political advertisements as long as number one, the advertisement is paid for by the candidate or the party. Number two, the ad states that it is only the view of you as the individual and not the position of the church. As a pastor, you can fully participate in political committees or even run for office as long as your political work is done independently of the church for which you work. We recommend at PJI that you clearly state that you are acting as an individual, not a representative of the church. Your church may be used as a polling place on election day. If so, that's great. In fact, it might even be a benefit to your community. Finally, let's look at finances and politics. Your church is not allowed to donate any money or funds to a political campaign or a political party. However, your congregants and church leaders acting on their own behalf are free to establish small PACs or groups to financially support candidates and initiatives in which they believe. Pastors and church leaders, let me encourage you, as this election approaches, let us be wise stewards of the voice God has given us. The world needs the church more now than ever before. And by taking action within the legal guidelines we have put forward, you have an opportunity to help your congregation speak up without jeopardizing your church's tax exempt status. So on behalf of Pacific Justice Institute, we hope this is a helpful resource to you as you boldly and wisely proclaim the values that are near and dear to your church's heart. If you have any questions, please reach out to us as we would love to be a help and an encouragement to you. I'm Peter Mord, pastor liaison of Pacific Justice Institute.